Singapore's government will start charging unvaccinated COVID patients admitted to hospitals or community treatment facilities from December 8, after unvaccinated people are making up a sizable majority of those needing medical care. A statement on the government's Ministry of Health website said, currently, Unvaccinated persons make up a sizable majority of those who require intensive inpatient care and disproportionately contribute to the strain on our healthcare resources. Hence, from December 8, 2021, we will begin charging COVID-19 patients who are unvaccinated by choice. This will apply to all unvaccinated COVID-19 patients admitted on or after December 8, 2021 to hospitals and CDFs. COVID-19 medical bills for those who are ineligible for vaccination will still be fully paid for by the government, I. E. Children under 12 years old or medically ineligible persons. As of November 14, 85% of Singapore's total population had received two doses of COVID vaccines, 86% had received at least one dose, and 21% had received their booster shots. In comparison, as of December 5, 89% of over 12-year-olds in the UK have had their first dose of the COVID vaccine, and 81% have had their second dose. In 2020-21 the cost of treating COVID patients totaled £7.8 billion according to the NHS Confederation, and the expenses for each ICU patient can stretch to tens of thousands of pounds. This poll is now closed. Click here to see the results. In the UK, the unvaccinated are disproportionately filling up ICU beds, and head of the Oxford Jab Programme Professor Sir Andrew Pollard said COVID-19 is no longer a disease of the vaccinated. He added, among the general public, the pandemic is still regarded as a silent pestilence, made visible in the images of patients fighting for their next breath. This ongoing horror, which is taking place across ICUs in Britain, is now largely restricted to unvaccinated people. The chance that a fully vaccinated person will end up in ICU due to COVID-19 is 33 times lower than for a non-vaccinated person, according to research by the Netherlands National Institute for Public Health and the Environment. From September 20th to October 17th, unvaccinated people made up 34. 6% of COVID hospitalizations in England, despite only 19% of the population being unvaccinated. In comparison, fully vaccinated people made up 61. 2% of COVID hospitalizations despite making up 81% of the population. This poll is now closed. Click here to see the results. In northeast London between July 14 and September 2, almost 90% of COVID patients admitted to ICU were not fully vaccinated, and COVID patients took up a third of ICU beds, which are usually given to cancer and heart disease patients. Parjam Zalfaghari, a consultant in intensive care medicine and anesthesia at Bart's Health NHS Trust said, a considerable amount of resources is needed to treat patients in ICU, and those with COVID-19 are no exception. On average, a person with COVID-19 stays in an ICU bed for three times longer than ICU patients who are admitted with other conditions. The ongoing admission of patients with COVID-19 to critical care units is impacting on already stretched staff and, causing sustained pressure on services across northeast London. He continues, nearly 90% of patients in ICUs with COVID-19 across northeast London aren't fully vaccinated. 
This clearly shows that getting two doses of a vaccine is the best way to reduce your chances of becoming seriously ill with COVID-19 and ending up in hospital. The individuals currently in our ICUs with COVID-19 are unlikely to have been admitted to intensive care if they had been fully vaccinated. A similar trend has been observed across the world. For example, 4 in 5 COVID patients in intensive care are not vaccinated in the Netherlands, and in Michigan 87% of COVID ICU patients are unvaccinated. Should people who refuse vaccination be charged if they end up in ICU with COVID? Let us know in the comments section below. This poll is now closed. Click here to see the results. Make sure you're never left behind by receiving the biggest news of the day covering politics, royal, and finance. Sign up for the daily briefing.